So this is part three of factoring, and in part three we're going to look at difference of squares. So in the difference of squares, when we talked about conjugate pairs, we had like a plus b, a minus b, like this, and the outside terms were negative a, b, and the inside terms were positive a, b, so they canceled each other out. Because they're opposite signs here, but the exact same numbers, they drop out the middle term and we're left with this perfect square, a times a and b times b. So we need to figure out what the a's are and the b's are and so forth. So I want to look at this one and I'm going to let y to be x squared. In fact, we could put that in our calculator and look at the table here if we wanted to. x caret 2 and then we're going to go look at our table and when 1 is squared, we get 1. When 2 is squared, my table over there says 4. When 4 is squared, I get 16. Notice I've skipped some, but these are the most common ones, but sometimes you can forget what they are. 6 times 6 would be 36. And if I keep scrolling down here, I get 7 it would be 49. 9 would be 81. And 10 would be 100. So if we're looking in this column, this is like our a squared or our b squared. These numbers would be our a squared or b squareds, and this column would be our a's or our b's. So when we're looking at x squared minus 9, x times x is always going to be x squared. So a is always going to be x there. But I have a 9. And if I look over at 9, I don't have it there, but I can look at my table in my calculator. When y was 9, it said that x was 3. So 3 is my b. And so all we have to do is write our first terms, because factors of the first term are first terms. So my x and my x, factors of the last term, that's my 3 and my 3. And then we do our opposite signs, and we're done factoring. These are really quite nice. So let's look at this one. I wanted to remind you that we need to always look for greatest common factor. And in this case, we have one. It would be 4. So we have 4, our greatest common factor, times x squared, and 4 times 9 is 36, so x squared minus 9. Now I have two terms. Okay, this is key. I have two terms. And is it a difference of squares? Can't be a sum, but is it a difference of squares? Well, if you look at that very carefully, this is a perfect square, and 9 is a perfect square, and we're subtracting, so yes, it is. So I have to carry along my 4, but now I'm going to find out what my a's and my b's are, so I can fill in x squared, then a is going to be x and 9, that tells me that b is going to be 3 times 3. So my x's are my first terms, and my 3's are my last terms, and the only thing I have to do is make 1 a positive and 1 a negative so that my middle terms will fall out, and there I have a very colorful solution. So, back here, do we have a greatest common factor? 16 and 25 do not have anything in common. So I don't have to worry about that. I just have to think, okay, 16x squared. Then my a is going to be, I know it's x, but I've got a number in here. So I come back over to my calculator, and then when I have 16, it tells me over here that my a must be the 4 times x. Unsquare both of those, we get 4x. My b would be 25, which says it's b squared is 25, so b would be 5. So here we go. First terms are 4x and 4x. Last terms are 5 and 5. One of them has to be positive and one of them has to be negative, and we're done factoring. And we're done factoring, literally. So I want to take some time to think about a strategy. I think we have some time here. Strategy. Step one is always find the greatest common factor. Step two is find the number of terms. 
because we factor different types of problems differently depending on the number of terms. If there's two, then you have to ask yourself, is it a difference of squares? If it is, you can go further. If it's not, you're done. But you might have three terms. Okay, with three terms, we're going to factor those with the A, C, or box method and the X. A, C, and B. And then we might also have the possibility that we have four terms. And when we have four terms, remember that's where you take the first two terms and the last two terms and find the greatest common factor. And then you also, then you take the greatest common factor of the two term result. And then the last step in our strategy then would be just to check the factors one more time for a greatest common factor. Sometimes we don't catch it in the very beginning, but it will be in the end. That's Here's an example of what I'm talking about. If I had like 2x plus 4 and x minus 3. Well, 2x minus 4 or 2x plus 4 has a common factor in it of 2. So then I need to factor that out and I'd have x plus 2 and then our x minus 3. This would be the completely factored form.